So flux core, you said flux core, everything is flux core to you. And I said, oh, hold on, there's more than just one flux core. There's like self-shielded wire or gasless wire or open arc wire. And then there's dual shield wire. They all are tubular wire with a metal tube on the outside filled with flux on the inside compared to like a solid wire, like an ER70 S6. But the dual shield wire here, flux cord, gas shielded, so depends on who you talk to, this wire is either called a flux cord gas shielded. I mean, they're all flux cord, but there's major differences. This is either called, Lincoln calls something like this an outer shield. Um, most people call it dual shield. Um, That's another term for it. I can't remember. And then when you look at the gasless wire, that's a flux cord wire as well. And it's either called a gasless, gasless flux core wire, or it's called the inner shield when you buy Lincoln product, or it's called an open arc wire or self shielded wire so all these are the same and then all these are the same now they're all flux cord now these here you weld with the wire on dc plus and these here on dc minus and then you could say well let's just put some shielding gas to one of those it'll do the same thing well, that couldn't be further from the truth. Some of these wires need the oxygen in the air to make a chemical reaction to gain strength. And if you engulf it in a shielding gas atmosphere with CO2 or argon or argon CO2 mixes, you take the oxygen away that's in the air that it needs to react with to gain strength. So that's why you can never use, well, you can never use without prior checking gas on a flux cord, self-shielded open arc wire. If you have a wire that's designed to be gasless, if you don't know nothing about it, if you can't find any literature on it, use it gasless, DC electrode negative. Now, some of them are rated where you can use gas with them because they have a different composition. Typically, they're still electrode negative. Just because you get gas involved, it's not an electrode positive kind of deal. But when you look at the deposits, the, the white stuff that comes off, it's like some aluminum material, some reaction in there that needs the oxygen in the air to fully complete the chemical process as you're welding. So another thing to consider is these open arc wires, typically they're not sensitive to any, to any wind. You can weld those outside in a 20, 30 mile an hour wind, not a problem because they are designed to be open arc and self-shielded, where the, where the shielded wires, they can handle some wind and typically shielded wires require a high flow rate. They either require 100% CO2 or they require a 75% argon, 25% CO2 mixture. Now, if this is, this is all talking for steel. Um, if you use the 100% CO2, you're typically in a globular transfer. If you go to 75-25, you can be in a spray transfer with that wire. And then you can get these wires the dual shield wires are typically rated multi-pass, unlimited thickness. The, the self-shielded inner shield open arc wire, you have to read the packaging really closely. What's happening there is a lot of them wires are only rated in a, for a single pass application, no multi-pass. So if you have something to weld that's quarter inch thick, you have to get like an 045, 052, 116 wire 
in order to do this in a single pass because you don't have the option of multi-pass welds. And if you go and do multi-pass welds, your integrity is compromised on the wire, on the weld, on the finished product. So then there is wires that can weld multiple passes, but only so many or only up to a certain thickness. They all have limitations to my knowledge. And there's like over 30 or 40 different kinds. It's a very, you can't just say, oh, it's flux core. Okay, everything, all of these are flux core. And now to make things more complicated, you can also get them in stainless. You get dual shield wires in stainless. And yes, you weld those typically with 75-25. You can't run them with 100% CO2. And yes, people told you you can't weld stainless with 75-25. The dual shield wire is different. The, the chemical composition of the flux makes up the difference in shielding gas atmosphere that's needed. So you weld the dual shield stainless wire with 75-25 gas in electrode positive. And... Um, you have to weld those in a pulling motion. Yeah, I know everybody says Zila doesn't know how to weld. He always pushes, blah, 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 whatever. I get it. All these wires typically, unless the literature tells you different, can be pushed or pulled. Some of it is preference. Some of it is application. Uh, some of them, when the literature tells you your contact tip to work distance has to be inch and a quarter long, you can't weld it with a quarter inch stick out. You have to have inch and a quarter stick out. If it tells you you have to pull, you have to pull. The stainless dual shield wire, you always have to pull unless you want it to be like brown or black. You really, it's not turning out, it's not working for you. You only get the nice silver little rainbow color of things when you pull that stainless dual shield. Then you have self-shielded stainless wires as well. And there, again, you need to read the box. You need to know the specs. It's not easy. There is no one size fits all, and I just wing it. This is all the thing. You need to do a lot of reading before you even strike the first arc. And then when you weld aluminum, people say, well, I have this Harbor Freight gasless machine. Can I weld aluminum with it? Sure you can. When you go to Harbor Freight and you find your gasless aluminum flux cord wire, but when you find that, let me know. I want to buy a roll or two of that as well, because that'll be really interesting. All right, that's it for today on FluxCore Wires.